all networks will experience performance problems and there is no escaping this. The big one is latency. So your applications will experience latency. So latency either refers to the time between a data packet being sent and received or a round trip time, which is the time it takes for the packet to be sent and for it to get a reply. Then we have jitter. Now this is the variance in time delay between data packets in the network. We also have brownouts and total failures, but brownouts, which are partial failures, are really hard to detect sometimes. Backouts are easier, they're either up or down, but brownouts can be more complicated. So you need something to cover all of our performance related problems and not rely on users to tell you when there is a problem in the network. Remember that fixed bandwidth networks will experience congestion and this will degrade application performance. So let's say you have 10 people on your local area network that are sharing the same internet link. Each could be experienced a stable network and everything is working fine one day. Then there's a bit of a rush and we could add 20 or 30 people coming to your local area network. Now all of these people are using the same internet bound link and your experience will now be remarkably different from when you just had 10 people sharing the same link. So wouldn't it be best more specifically if the WAN edge was more dynamic and was able to overcome some of these challenges dynamically. Now we just discussed three of these challenges but believe me there are plenty of WAN edge challenges including the issues we have with security. So these problems of latency, jitter and brownouts and blackouts and congestion are not new problems and we have ways to approach this. For example we could implement quality of service which can be used to prioritize traffic and give voice and video more priority over let's say internet bound traffic. So here we use Quas to give each user a fair share of bandwidth and to ensure that the right amount of bandwidth is taken for mission critical applications and then low priority applications could be for example marked with best efforts. So in the past, what I like to do is have Quas combined with policy-based routing PBR. Now don't get this confused with policy-based redirect with the ACI. So policy-based routing is different and here we could provide a way to route traffic out your different WAN interfaces using dedicated high-speed links for mission-critical traffic and then we could use the other links for just user traffic and internet browsing which is less important. However, in the past when I've done this, there has been a lot of manual intervention and I really had to know how things worked and did a lot of planning up front. Not to mention the challenges I had when troubleshooting when things go wrong. I mean, it's okay for me to troubleshoot, but there will be hands off to an operations department and some of these designs and configurations could get quite large. I would also have to plan this traffic spitting out different interfaces and be honest with you, this method was not really dynamic. However, these technologies and mechanisms did work but they could have been more cloud ready. And now today we are deep into cloud adoption where almost everything is offered as a service. So the best approach would be to marry up the needs of today's cloud computing, where things can be spun up in a moment's notice, including an entire data center, along with the benefits that we got from Quas and even MPLS traffic engineering to the dynamic nature we need for modern networks and the answer here is SD-WAN or software-defined networking for the wide area network. So SD-WAN has taken the concept of software-defined network which we see in the local area network and brought in cloud orchestration and then applied it to the wide area network. So you're probably wondering to yourself right now why did we not do this before? Latency is not new, well congestion certainly isn't and software and hardware problems such as blackouts and brownouts have been around since the existence of networks and applications. Well, in fact, we did do this, but SD1 was disguised with a different kind of name. So let's look at Cisco's approach. Now, Cisco had a product called iWAN, which was known as Intelligent WAN, which provided traffic control and security and integrated into Cisco branch office routers. It offered quality of service, WAN optimization, VPN tunneling, without the cost of expensive MPLS VPNs. So we had an overlay approach like most vendors will have, where we used DMVPN and IPsec, which enabled the use of any carrier service. Now these carrier services, as you would know, would be MPLS broadband, 3G, 4G, and LTE. So we also had performance-based routing where border routes collect traffic and path information 
and then they send it to what's known as a master controller which is like a dedicated router now this dedicated router let's say master controller is responsible for enforcing the service policies to match the application's requirements these applications are optimized over the WAN using Cisco's application visibility and control AVC and wide area application services WAAS now AVC which includes technologies such as NBAR and NetFlow and Quas and all this sounds great but why do you think Cisco moved from these products towards SD-WAN well the simple answer is complexity the IWAN and PFR technologies are fantastic and they do work but they take a lot of work to deploy and especially manage and troubleshoot and one thing I like about SD-WAN is that we can have unified policy and security from a central dashboard and it can also be integrated with SASE but before we look into this let's have a look at my favorite feature for SD-WAN so when we're moving from existing legacy transport networks and moving to use the internet as a means of transport many organizations are finding that they can increase their available bandwidth while at the same time reduce the transport cost which is a really big benefit however there is no guaranteed service level or let's say service level agreements SLAs for internet so here we can use SD-WAN feature known as application aware routing where we can identify business critical traffic and specify the required service level agreement for that traffic class and all this can be done on an application by application basis also when we are replacing or augmenting existing MPLS circuits with internet as a transport which is a lot cheaper but also maybe not as reliable we can now establish multiple connectivity paths between their locations so what this means we could have MPLS up and running at the same time and internet bound traffic and we can dynamically share load over these links and the ability to move to the internet as a transport while still providing the necessary end user experience enables enterprises to really realize the cost savings by utilizing all of their bandwidth in this active active fashion rather than needing to continue to invest in upgrading circuits which on the MPLS side of things has a really long lead times so just a moment ago we mentioned SASE so the SASE movement is really strong now and this is where security is shifting and converging into a cloud native form and you'll have heard different names for this trend and we have secure internet gateway SIG and then we have SASE which stands for secure access service edge so an example of a SASE product is Cisco umbrella and Cisco has this cloud delivered security platform that secures internet access and controls cloud application usage for all your edge types which which could include network branch offices and roaming users so with SASE we don't have multiple point solutions anymore so unlike having desperate security tools scattered around your office umbrella unifies these security systems that may include secure web gateway cloud delivered firewall DNS layer security which is your first line defense along with cloud access security brokers and puts all this functionality and delivers it from the cloud so this is on the security side of things which SASE takes care but what I like about SASE is that it can be integrated with SD-WAN and this integration with SD-WAN fulfills the network connectivity side of things umbrella integrates with Cisco SD-WAN to provide security and policies for direct internet access at the branch sites so with SASE we solve the security side of things and with SD-WAN we satisfy the network connectivity side of things